Hi, Akshay. I have an input file with that includes the mesh of a single part from an automotive cradle assembly. Can you help me import it into the 3D Experience platform? Sure. So to import this or to view the mesh in the 3D Experience platform, you'd first have to um, create a, a single part and then you would have to uh, insert a finite element model representation and then you would have to import the, uh, the input file into the finite element model representation so that you associate it that way. Um, let me just sh show you how to do that. So from the top bar, let's first create a 3D part. You can either go to content or you can just straight away click from one of the uh, favorites here, 3D part. So I'm just going to enter name. Part. So this is an empty part that does not have anything, no geometry. So the next step would be to go into the V plus R quadrant and all the way at the, bo at the bottom you have this structural model create app. So when you click that, select none as your method of initialization and click OK. So here you have a finite element model representation that's created that has no mesh and you have an empty part that has no geometry. Now what you have to do is right click the topmost level of the finite element model representation and then click on import mesh. So when you do that you have a choice, you have, three cho you have two choices essentially either from an external file or from an external representation. Uh, so choose from file and then select the path where your input file is. So in this case just taking this INP file open and we import it. So that's pretty much how you actually import um, an external mesh into the 3D experience platform. Um, let's go and expand nodes and elements and see how the imported mesh looks like. So as you can see the imported mesh is essentially one big container and all the elements that are there uh, under that big container are essentially groups within the 3D experience platform. So these are groups that were created uh, in, in another software and uh, once you bring it in you can see that all these different uh, elements are essentially translated into groups. So if you want to view the contents of any of these groups you can just click on any of these groups right click and say show content. So it automatically will just give you like an assessment and it'll tell you what exactly this group has. So I can just, you know, just hide these things so you can just see the elements that are there. So in this case, half of the model has been created as one group. So That's great. That seemed quick and easy. I just created my part. I created the finite element representation, yes. FEMREP, and then I imported the input file from a file. Yeah. So now how can I get more information about this mesh? Can I check and see if it's any good? Yeah, um, so to do that, we have to actually go into the, uh, the meshing context. So from the fixed area of the action bar, let's go into meshing. So the first thing you would want to do is, since we did not create this natively, you'd want to first see if there are any overlapping elements, if there are any intersecting elements, so on and so forth. Once that is fixed or once that is uh, found out, we can always go and check the quality of the mesh. That's, that's uh, another thing. So just to go and check if the elements are all, if they have proper connectivity, you can just go into the uh, action bar and select check section. And here you have the, uh, the interferences tool. So give a very small clearance and of, in this case, I've just given 0.2, say apply. So it looks like you have two regions that, that have intersecting elements and interfering elements. So as you can see here, you have some overlapping elements, you have some intersecting elements. And here, you have some interfering and intersecting elements right here. So, yeah, so we can, so the next step would be to target the regions and clean them up. Um, so let's do that. So let's take this region, it's my first region that I need to repair. Um, from the uh, action bar, select the operate section right here and then select this tool right here that says meshing editor. So once you click that tool, you basically have to select the mesh part that you want to edit. So you can just click this part and this goes into its own 
um, context where you have like a set of tools to go and repair your mesh. So, so in this case, so we have this tool that's called element deletion. You can just click that tool and start deleting any elements that you don't want in your mesh. So I can click that, so that's essentially deleted, this one. So if you have any difficulty in selecting elements, in this case they are overlapped and it's kind of intersecting too. You might just want to zoom in a little bit and select that element, sort of clean it up. Those were just spurious elements it looks like. Yeah, they are. So similarly you can just clean these. Now what if I made a mistake and clicked the wrong element? Um, you can just do Control Z. So you can see that oh. I can go one step at a time. And to redo your action, you can just press Control Y. It's just like a Word document, essentially. Perfect. So there and there. Ah, excellent. Thank you. Yes. So I can to exit the tool, just click the tool again once you've finished deleting the elements. So you can see this region is visually it looks okay, but we'll still run the checker again. It's going to check. So we don't have so this region is fixed essentially. We don't have any problems with this region. Um, so now let's target the second region that we need to fix. Let's target this region right here. Okay. So similarly, um, let's go back into mesh editing tools. Um, click on element deletion and start deleting elements. So we are going to rebuild the elements right here. Um, in the previous region, we just cleaned them up, we just removed extra elements, but here, since you have elements in different directions and different orientations, you might want to just rebuild the region yourself uh, so that you have like a nice continuous mesh. Uh, so I'm just going to delete these elements and rebuild them. So some, some something like that. So, you know, we can start rebuilding the elements depending on the on the shape that we have right here. So let's go here into element creation. So here you have the choice of creating either triangles or quadrilaterals. So let's first create triangles. Uh, let's see, you can just choose three nodes straight away from display and create triangle elements like that. Two and three. One, two, and three. Does it matter if I do that clockwise or counterclockwise? No, it doesn't matter. doesn't matter. Three. So I have five triangle elements and now I can just go ahead. Even without clicking OK, I can just switch to quadrilaterals right here and start creating quadrilaterals. So you can just keep doing this depending on what you want. You can just switch between triangles and quadrilaterals and keep creating elements. That's nice. So one, two, three. Four, one, two, three, and four. Now you can click OK. Now that so region has been built. So now it looks OK again, visually. You don't see any interfering and intersecting elements. Let's run the checker again, just to see if everything is OK. Sorry. I see no intersections, no interference right there in the dialog box. Yep, there's no problems. Looks like those three, those two regions have been fixed. I do see another small region right here that might create problems if you're running an analysis later on. As you can see, the elements are actually skewed a little bit. I might want to build this region because as you can see, these elements are just flat, whereas these elements actually have... Something's going on here. Let's go and clean that up. So, again, go back here, element deletion, one, two, and as you can see, you have this element right here. We don't need that. Let's take that out. So, that's one, two, and three. And click that to exit the tool. Now, let's just build a couple of quadrilateral elements. One, two, three. Four. Nice and easy. Four. Much better. Much better than what it was before. Seems to be. All right. So looks like we fixed all the issues that we had in the mesh. 
Now, you wanted to check the quality of the mesh, right? So yes. let's go and do that too. Let's go to check. Now we've already checked for interferences. Now let's go and do a quality analysis. So just by visually mm -hmm. seeing, it looks okay because most of the model has, most of the mesh green, which means it's, it's a good quality. I can always go and do like a quality report just to see what are the hard numbers that actually comprise this mesh. So you can see that 94.58% is all green, which means good quality. Uh, poor is yellow and bad is red. So you have 10 bad elements and you have 161 poor elements. Let's see if we can improve this quality a little more. Um, so just close this, but keep the quality analysis tool active. Don't close it because now the actions that we'll be doing, you can actually see how the quality changes as these actions are being performed. Um, so I would want to go here to optimize. So there's this tool called optimization. Uh, select the entire mesh. So to create a trap, you would want to first click to start the trap. Just move your mouse down so that you see dotted lines. Click again to form the line and just follow the same process till you actually select the entire mesh. When you come here, when you want to close your loop, just double click near the starting point and that's going to essentially close it for you. As you can see, the quality has improved. Wow. It, it's it, optimized the mesh quite a bit. Now you can do this optimization process again to optimize it even further. So I'm just going to do the same trap selections. And you can see there, were, there was a, a few red elements right there that's gone. Let me just do a control C right here and show you how it looked like a couple of runs back. That was so fast and easy. Yeah, it so just I'll, just do a, I'll just do control Y just to get back to our current state. And once more. That's amazing. Right. So and you what can, do the quality numbers look like now? Let's see that. So it's 97.18. It's improved by 2.5%, mm -hmm. which is not bad. Uh, and from 160 poor elements, you have 83, and you have from 10 to 5. It's not bad. So the next thing what we can do is let's take a specific region. And of course, optimization will give you a global, it'll optimize the mesh globally, but what if you want a particular region to be cleaned out yourself? So in that case, what you would do is, um, let's go to manual edit, select smooth around modifications, and just start moving nodes. Oh my goodness. That's almost fixed the entire problem. <laughs> uh, and once you do that, you can also like, you know, hover over any quadrilateral element and if it's too big of an element, you can just split it into triangles just like that. And the surrounding elements will be smoothed automatically because we selected this option right here. Similarly here, you can see it's automatically smoothing stuff and it's cleaned it up for you in one, one go. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. so if you, if you don't choose this and if you start moving nodes, sorry, uh, let me just do a control C here. So if I answer like this, now, if I move the nodes, you can see that there's no smoothing happening around that place. But if I choose smoothing and then move the mesh surrounding it automatically heat. So yeah, that's, you can, you can now, if you, if you repeat this for the other regions, it will automatically take care of it too. So just by doing this, let's see how it's improved the quality. So we have 97.82%. It's reduced the bad elements from five to three and from mm -hmm. 83, I believe was the previous number to 65. So if you keep going, you know, you can always end up with a very, very good quality mesh. You can clean it up. Now, can I use these powerful mesh edit tools on a native mesh as well? Yes, these, these, uh, these mesh editing tools can be used on native surface meshes, just like how you have a native imported mesh, right? Uh, sorry, an imported mesh right here. You can uh, use it on native surface meshes only. You cannot use it on native solid meshes or imported solid meshes. These tools are specifically meant for surface meshes. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you very much. No problem.